finished at the maqam of Imam Ali ibn Hussein al-Sajjad, peace be upon him. And now we'll visit the maqam of my master, Sahab al-Asr al-Zaman. Peace be upon you, my awaited savior. Peace be upon you, and may Allah hasten your appearance to rid us of tyranny and oppression and to fill this world with justice and peace. We came from the maqam of my master, Ali ibn Hussein al-Sajjad, peace be upon him. And now here I stand in one of the holiest places in this holy mosque of Sahla. This maqam here, this holy site here, is where my master, Imam al-Mahdi, peace be upon him, and may Allah hasten his reappearance, was seen. Here, he used to pray. Here, he was seen by our ulama, my master, salam Allah My master blessed this land with his feet. My master blessed this land with his palms, with his forehead. My master supplicated here to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My master prayed here to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a story. We have a beautiful event, my dear brothers and sisters, to narrate to you about the master of our time, Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadhar. May Allah hasten his reappearance. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. My master, Imam al-Mahdi, has a story in this mosque. And this story will be narrated. Before we continue, and before we narrate this beautiful event, we promise to provide you, my dear viewer, with more sources, with more sources from our Ahlul Bayt, from our Imams, peace be upon them, concerning the fada'il, the merits of this mosque. This hadith that I will read to you now, the madhmoon of this hadith has been narrated before. Therefore, we will try our best to narrate what is new from the hadith. You see, we spoke before that Imam Sadiq asked his companions countless times, did my uncle Zayd ibn Ali, the martyr, the shaheed, come to Masjid al-Sahla? In the same hadith, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abban, and this report is narrated by my master, by my, this report is narrated by Shaykh al kulaini in his book, Al-Kafi Sharif. In this book, Shaykh al kulaini narrates this tradition. He narrates, he says, we entered upon Abu Abdullah, Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, peace be upon him, and he asked us, he said, which one of you have knowledge of my uncle Zayd ibn Ali? A man from the group said, I do have knowledge. One night we were with Zayd ibn Ali and we passed by the house of Muawiyah ibn Ishaq al Ansari. He said to us, Let us depart to Masjid al Sahla. My Imam al Sadiq asked the question. He said, did my uncle Zayd go to the mosque? They said, no. They said, no, because an issue came up preventing him from going to the mosque. Imam alayhi salam said, listen, Wallah, by Allah, if he had sought refuge in this mosque and if he had stayed here in a year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would what? Would push away the fear of this dunya for a year. If he sought refuge in this mosque, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him this refuge. Then the Imam again continues to narrate the same reports that I narrated before about Idris and Ibrahim. But for the sake of repetition, and repetition is always good, 
we will narrate the nas of the Imam. The Imam says, he says, did you not know that from here Prophet Idris used to reside? Here is the location where Prophet Idris used to reside and here is where Prophet Idris used to do his tailoring. Did you not know that Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, Prophet Abraham began his march to the giants of Yemen from this mosque. Did you not know that Prophet David, peace be upon him, began his march towards fighting Jalut, Goliath from this mosque? He says again, I'm going to repeat it because repetition is always key. He said, in this mosque is a green stone. In this mosque is a green stone and this green stone or this tablet has the image and the characteristics of every single Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent and that he said that from here in this mosque the rider disembarks. Who is the rider? Al-Khidr, peace be upon him. And we visited Al-Khidr alayhi salam. Here is where Al-Khidr used to disembark. In another tradition, with a different madhmoon, a different context, he says after narrating that there's a green stone in this area that has the image of every prophet, he says that there is under that stone is the clay from which every prophet was created. Listen, this is the merit of this mosque. Honestly, no matter how much I come to try to narrate to you, my dear viewers, about the fada'il and merit of this mosque, I can be considered and called a muqassab. It's impossible. It's impossible to come and talk to you about this mosque unless you come here and actually see with your own eyes. Now, we visited the Maqam Imam Al Mahdi and I promised you a story. I promised you a story that I will talk about Imam Al Mahdi. And now we will go visit, though, before we speak about Imam Al Mahdi, we will visit the Maqam of Prophet Idris, peace be upon him. And we will narrate to you one more report, insha'Allah. And then we will begin this journey to narrate to you a beautiful event that took place in this mosque with my master Imam Al Mahdi. And then continue at the end to the maqam of Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq. And insha'Allah, from there we will also narrate to you what happened in this mosque with Imam Al Sadiq, peace be upon him. With me now, insha'Allah. You see, my dear viewers, there is a reason that we narrate to you more than one tradition. Even though the tradition may be a repetition. Why? Because we want to show you that there is not one or two narrations or three. No, it's mutawatir. These ahadith are mutawatir, meaning they've been narrated in so much different chains and so much different books by so much different narrators that we have certainty of these ahadith, of these reports being from the ma'sumin and we have certainty and belief that this mosque contains this merit. Now, I mentioned that I have one report. Honestly, I may have lied because I have a couple more reports. I promised to narrate one report and we will see if time lets us narrate the other. Let us start with this report. This report, again, this report might seem like repetition, but there are stuff in this report which is not narrated in other reports. But I can consider this report as the jami', the compilation and the gathering of all the reports in one. It gives you a more beautiful picture and it talks about stuff that has not been narrated. Now, I stand by the Maqam of Prophet Idris, peace be upon him. And you saw, and you witnessed, and you heard that Prophet Idris, peace be upon him, is here where he took his house. We will narrate to you a different tradition now that gives you an even clearer picture on the fada'il of this mosque. This hadith is narrated in a mu'tabar, reliable, book which there is a consensus amongst our scholars and ulama of the authenticity and the reliability of this book 
This book is narrated in none other than the book Kamil al-Ziyarat. Kamil al-Ziyarat, the compiler, Ibn Qulawayya al-Qummi Radwan Allah Ta'ala alayhi. He narrates this tradition in his book Kamil al-Ziyarat. He states with his adsnad, with his chain of transmission on the authority of Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman says, I heard my master, Abi Abdullah, Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, say, listen, I heard my master say to Aba Hamza Thumani, he said, O oh, Aba Hamza, did you see my uncle Zayd ibn Ali when he departed? Again, a different tradition, speaking about Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and his uncle Zayd. He wants to see, did his uncle Zayd, or he wants to, he wants to get this picture to us. He's asking them where he knows. The Imam knows about his uncle. The Imam knows about his uncle Zayd if he went to the mosque or did not go to the mosque. But he wants this picture to be received by us. He said, did my uncle Zayd come to the masjid? Then he asked them. He said, yes, I saw him when he left. The Imam alayhi salam says, did he pray in the mosque of Suhail? One of the names of this mosque was Suhail. Now it's called Sahla. When it was first built, it was called the mosque of Bani Dhafr. And the name over time changed. The mosque right now is predominantly known as Masjid as sahla Then Abu Hamza said, do you mean as sahla Other than that, if you mean as sahla means no, he did not come here and pray. Then the Imam said, if, if he would have prayed in this mosque, two units of prayer and seek refuge in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have guaranteed it for him and would have given it for him. He says that if my uncle Zayd prayed two units of prayer in this mosque and sought refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would have guaranteed him the refuge. Allah would have given him this refuge. Then, Aba Hamza asked the Imam, he says, may my mother be sacrificed for you. This is all for the mosque of Sahla? Is this all for this grand mosque of Sahla? The Imam said yes, and the Imam began to narrate the Fada'il. And we will repeat it again and again and again. The Imam says, in this mosque was the house of Prophet Abraham. From here he would depart towards the giants. In this house, in this mosque was the house of Prophet Idris, peace be upon him. And in here, in this mosque he would do his tailoring. In this mosque was the in this embarkment plate location, when this mosque was the resting place of Al Khudr, peace be upon him. He continues, in this mosque is a green stone in which the characteristic and image of every single prophet was ascribed on. And as well, under this clay or under this rock is a clay in which every single prophet is created from, as I mentioned to you before. He continues, he says, from this Allah created the prophets, this clay. Then he says, there is an area in this mosque called the Mi'raj and the Farooq. Now, what does this mean? According to Al-Alam Al-Majlisi, and I'll read to you the Nas of Al-Alam Al-Majlisi. He says, the meaning behind Mi'raj could point to the reports that are narrated that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam, when he ascended to the heavens, he stopped by Al-Kufa Mosque to pray. He might have, he says, he might have come to this mosque as well and from there depart again. The meaning of Mi'raj, listen, the meaning of Mi'raj here can also be the literal meaning. This is pointing to the gathering of the believers at this location. And from this location, the believers will head, ascend to the heavens. And then, Alam al-Majlisi begins talking about Al-Farooq. He says, Farooq, it may be categorized under the Mi'raj, it may be categorized under the Mi'raj, meaning from here, since the Mi'raj is where people ascend to the heavens, that from here as well, they will be divided between the people that go to heaven and people that go to hell. He says, the other meaning can be pointing to that the Qa'im Ajrullah Ta'ala Faraju Sharif, may Allah hasten his appearance, that this location might be where he divides truth and falsehood. These are the meanings by Al-Alam al And I myself say, this is my own saying, I say, I believe in the saying of Al-Alam al 
It makes sense that the Mi'raj here can be in this, that there's a platform here in which the believers will ascend to heavens. And the Farooq as well will be divided because the Hakim al Shar'i, the one who is able to perform the Islamic laws and judge by them, will be Imam al Mahdi. May Allah hasten his appearance. The Imam continues. The Imam says, the mosque is in the vicinity of the city of Kufa, and from it, mankind will depart to the day of judgment. This also aids the, the, the fact that Mi'raj might be this platform where the believers will be taken towards heaven or hell, depending on their judgment. He says, from here the horn of resurrection will be blown and mankind will be ready to gather. On the right side of the mosque, 70,000 will enter heaven without any judgment. This can be related to the 70,000 that speak of Masjid al-Kufa. Because in Masjid al-Kufa is a hadith saying that 70,000 in this land, in this masjid, will enter heaven without judgment. Imam Sadiq says, they are the winners. They revere Allah and await His meeting, yet fear in meeting Him, knowing He is merciful and just. They held steadfast to follow Allah's command. They acted upon their actions and recognized that Allah has knowledge and insight of what they do. They will not be judged nor punished. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes all malice, purifies the believers in every way. Then the Imam concludes. The Imam concludes, and this is the report. And now, since we have time, I will narrate to you a different report. This report is short, yet beautiful. Abi Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq says, while speaking about Sahel, listen, I really enjoy reading such reports and such traditions. He says, it is the residence of our Qa'im, of our Imam when he appears and he will take it as his house for him and his family. This is the image that I yearn to see. This is the image that I wish I could see. Ya Allah, I wish and every believer wishes they could see this image, this beautiful image of Imam al-Mahdi in this holy mosque. One more tradition. Alhamdulillah, we do have time. One more tradition, insha'Allah. Then we will go on and narrate the issue about Imam al-Mahdi. Ajarullah ta'ala faradu sharif It is recorded as well in the Bihar of Al-Allamat al-Majlisi from the book again, Kamil al-Ziyarat of Ibn Qulawai al-Qummi. The companion of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, Abu Bakr al-Hadrami, he asked Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, he said, my master, which is the best mosque? Which of Allah's lands is better after the sacred site of Allah and the messenger of Allah? My master Abu Abdullah Ja'far al-Sadiq said, O oh, Abu Bakr al-Kufa, the mosque of al-Kufa. Then he says, after that is the mosque of Sahla. The mosque of Sahla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent any prophet except that he has prayed in this mosque. Then Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, it is the residence of our Qa'im. It is the residence of our Qa'im and after our Qa'im, it is the residence of the divine prophets and the messengers. This can relate to the fact that this land may be so pure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it towards heavens. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will take Karbala to the heavens and take Al-Kufa to the heavens because they're all gardens from the gardens of paradise. My dear brothers and sisters, these are some <coughs> of the narrations of this holy mosque, the mosque of Sahla, the house of my master, Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar. In this mosque, the mosque, the house of Ibrahim, the house of Idris, wherein the Goliath, wherein the David, peace be upon him, went to fight Goliath. <coughs> In this house, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, 
departed to fight the giants in Yemen. In this mosque prayed every single prophet and messenger and successor. In this beautiful mosque, in this beautiful mosque, all of these wonders happened. In this mosque was blessed by the Imams, by Amir al Mu'mineen, by Imam al Sajjad, by Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam, by my master, Al Imam Al Mahdi al Muntadam. May Allah hasten his reappearance. My dear brothers and sisters, we will now narrate to you a beautiful incident that occurred here in this mosque. Now, my dear viewers, my dear brothers and sisters, we have narrated fada'il of this mosque and merits of this mosque as much as we could. And time is limited, and we do not have much time. But we will insha'Allah conclude with two more beautiful events that happened in this mosque. The first is a man who was blessed with meeting my master Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his appearance. And the next is concerning the holy maqam of my master Imam al-Sadr, peace be upon them. Insha'Allah with me now we will go. We will go and witness the beauty of this mosque together and witness the spirituality witness the atmosphere and we pray that my master can see us right now because he can hear me and see my location and I asked him and I ask him right now to please pay attention to please look at this Abd this slave I am here serving you my master I am here serving you and narrating to the public to the entire world about your beautiful home, insha'Allah. Bismillah. My dear and respected viewers, peace be upon you. I stand here at the mihrab with my master, Imam Ja'far al-Sadr, peace be upon him. And as you can see, the lights are off and there's no more light in this mosque. And the mosque is closing down. It is unfortunate that we're not able to continue and to be able to talk about the story behind this mihrab and to be able to talk about the story behind Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar, may Allah hasten his reappearance. So, I ask you, my dear viewer, to accept my forgiveness. I am very sorry. But insha'Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the chance to be able to do this again, we will continue, insha'Allah, in the second part and talk about these beautiful stories. And I hope you enjoyed this program. And I hope you went on the spiritual journey with me. And now that you're infused with new information, and new spirituality and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this divine tawfiq that he has given us here to be able to serve my master Imam al-Mahdi ajallahu ta'ala farjo wa sharif thank you peace be upon you every maqam you pray two units of prayer two ruk'ah of prayer and you, and you recite the dua ascribed to the maqam to the holy site here we stand at the maqam of Prophet Khudr alayhi salam where he was seen in this mosque where he still comes to this mosque and the Prophet or the holy pious man Al Khudr, because there is difference of opinion on whether he was a prophet or whether he was a pious man.